So now we're on a bit of a lockdown with uh, the old coronavirus. Um, I've got time to get into my shed. Um, so the idea today um, is going to be making a knife. Um, so let's start off with the basics, right? So if you are going to make a knife, you're going to need a high carbon steel. Wind's getting up. Um, you're going to need a high carbon steel. Now carbon. Once it's in a, in a knife, it helps the hardness of the knife. Now, if you had like a normal piece of mild steel, we've got a bit of mild steel here. So a normal piece of mild steel, if you heat that up and quench it, it would still be the same hardness. Okay? Just so you follow me. Right, so, but high carbon steel, if you heat it up and cool it slowly, it'll be soft. Um, so that would also give it a bit of flex, okay? So you'll see people heat treating the back of a knife, um, so it doesn't, so it likes things like machetes, so it's got a bit of a spring to it, whereas the front edge, which is your cutting edge, you want to be fairly hard. If you have it too hard, it can crack. So doing this kind of thing in your shed is very difficult, okay? We'll get that straight, straight away, right? So usually, you will make a knife shaped object and it will either won't retain an edge or it's going to break because it'll be too hard okay so where are you going to get carbon steel from so good place to get carbon steel from is things like files now files are obviously designed for filing other bits of metal so they're harder than the metal that they're actually filing okay uh, circular saw blades yeah, so we've got, we've got a Makita circular saw blade, and this is a, a metal circular saw blade. Now these are only about probably two mil thick. Um, so if you want to make a lightweight cutting knife, more sort of like food prep, go for the thinner steel. If you want to make a bushcraft, you know, battering knife, then you'd go for something like a file. So it's all down to the steel that you can find. Um, so, yeah, so old, old tools is where you're going to get your high carbon steel from. Right, and then other things, things like stainless steel. Now, stainless steel is naturally very, very hard, so it's naturally hard to work on. Now, there is a tempering process, but you'd have to know the um, oh, ladle analysis for the entire piece of steel, how much carbon it's got in it, how much chrome it's got in it, and every single stainless steel is absolutely different. So if you pick a bit of stainless steel out of a scrap bin, you ain't got no chance of hardening it properly. Okay? Um, with, same with carbon steel, the ladle analysis is slightly different, how much carbon is in it, but you can kind of wing it, you've got a little bit. So they always say about O1 tool steel. So O1 tool steel is gonna be your typical file, uh, but it has to be an old file. So this gets more complicated. So old files um, are completely hardened. Modern files, because it's quicker, they're case hardened. So they're only hard on the outside and they're soft in the middle. Um, like an armadillo. So they're soft in the middle, so they, they've still got flexibility, but they can still file away. But once the file starts to wear, it will just go blunt and then you're stuffed. Okay, so uh, what else, what else, what else can we talk about? Right, so how do we do, so annealing, right? So we heat it up and we cool it down really slowly. Okay, that is the annealing process. That will make your, your piece of steel softer and easier to work on, okay? Then you've got quenching. So quenching, where you heat it up and then you cool it really, really quickly, right? This makes all of the carbon lock together and makes it really, really hard. Now, when you see in films when they quench in snow or in water, yeah, you're more likely to, it's, well, it's more likely to explode, to be honest, but you also put in micro fractures in it. So you want to quench with something like warm oil, um, which can catch fire when you when you do quench it. Uh, I think I've got a, an old video that I'll link. Let's link it there. Is it that corner or is it that corner? I, I can never remember. Anyway, um, 
I'll stack it up anyway. Um, but there's not much of a tutorial, it's just a, me doing it. Um, so you quench, that will make it hard. Now, that is completely useless for a knife because it's too hard, right? So as soon as you batten it or if you drop it, it would shatter. Yeah, it goes very, very hard. And you can scrape a file across it and it won't make a mark, which is, lets you know that it's hard enough, okay? Um, so then you have to temper it. Now, if you watch uh, the TV show uh, Forged in Fire, that is absolute garbage, that show, because they never temper anything. Now, they must temper the stuff, for, the, for what they do, but it's a long process where you put it in an oven and you have to get it up to a certain Rockwell scale, which is a hardness. Um, so difficult, so yeah, difficult to get right, but you stick it in, you can stick it in your house oven for like two hours. Now, um, if you look at like a motorbike exhaust, if you notice it's like a rainbow pattern in the steel, um, so the different colors denote different hardness. Now with a knife you're gonna want um, like straw colour, a yellowy straw colour. So it goes blue, it goes straw colour and I think then it goes purple. Now I've, I've, this has been about four years since I've made a knife so um, I may have the order wrong but yeah what you're after is the straw colour, yellowy straw colour okay and that should give you uh, Rockwell scale. I think it's like 60 to 65 something like that so this is all just total guesswork, right? Without a proper kiln, without temperature control, I am making a knife-shaped object. I need to make that totally clear, because I guarantee someone will be in the comments crying their little eyes out, saying, oh no, you need to do it that way. So, this is gonna be a knife-shaped object, right? A cutting tool of some description, okay? Whether it can retain an edge, whether it's gonna be too brittle, we don't know, okay? End of the day, the basic mythology is soften it, form what you want, harden it, then temper it, okay? So it's not too brittle, but it's all a bit, it's, 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 it's guesswork. It's guesswork and doing it by eye, not overheating it, because then you can, you can burn the uh, carbon out of the steel. But, so what is the best knife to use? It's the one you've got. Okay, so if I make a knife shaped object and it cuts something, it's better than nothing. Okay, that's this is what we're aiming for. Okay, googled and I found some knife patterns which look pretty decent. Uh, I've got these ones as well. So I'm going to trace a couple of these out, then I'm going to cut a rough shape. Right, we're talking like proper rough. Right, so just, just basically get the basically the length and the width, that's all that matters. Okay, so there we've got our shapes there. And we got our grinder with a one millimetre uh, stainless steel disc so this makes less sparks so less chance of burning yourself down but we're also going to need the holy trinity of Right, so we've got our rough shapes here. You see, look, no, no real finesse in it. Now, we're gonna soften this now. So I light the fire, soften it, and then we're gonna crack on tomorrow.
Okay, so these are the knives out of the fire. And now all I've got to do is draw around them so I can get all the edges off. And then put them on the sander. Put them on the sander so we can get the rough shape. Okay, so this one's pretty much there. Um, so you need to this this corner is going to be very difficult to do on this sander. So this is just a cheapy one out of Aldi. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, if I cut this off, the guard off, then that will give me that rounded edge, so I can get into the corners. Um, so at the moment, obviously, I've only got a 90 degree um, angle. So, um, and then obviously, I've got the uh, the stone wheel here, which is quite good for getting into corners, but I don't really want to overdo it just yet. Okay, so it's right. So where's the small one? That one. Go away. Okay, so you see, I've marked out where the holes are. This is I can't grind past this point when I'm doing the blade, and this is where the handle is going to sit. Okay, so I just need those marks, and then I've transferred those onto both sides. I've done that on uh, all the knives. Okay, now. There is some slight warping in these because they're thin. Now, when I quench these, these will bend. So I'm not overly worried about it, as long as the actual knife itself isn't um, distorted. Um, so if I set it on something flat, um, I'll get as much of the twist out as I can, but don't want to force it. Because this, this steel is still feeling pretty hard. Right, so I need to, when I drill these, um, then I'll know how, how well the softening, the annealing process has uh, taken off or not. Um, otherwise, I may have to uh, do them again. We will see. But I may stick them in the kiln this time. Um, that might work, might not. Let's see. So normally, if this was a bit thicker, right, because I think I've made a rod from my own back making it this thin, because they are going to distort, but anyway, this is irrelevant. Right, normally you would get a drill bit that is the same thickness as your steel, and then you can score a line right the way down the middle of the line. That will give you a bearing line on this edge, so when you sand on here, you'll know where you've hit the middle. Does that make sense? So you can go to the nearly the middle, flip it over, do the other side until you hit the middle. That's kind of the plan. Now, I've got a piece of angle iron here with two bolts in it, if you can see that. And that is set at the angle that I want. Okay, so I can pack it up on washers to give more but that's pretty flat that's sort of the angle that i'm going to need so i'm going to start from here and then work down the edge start from there work down the edge 
if that makes sense and I can get a clamp on there just to hold the blade and then we'll flip it over okay so just found my vernier gauge so this might work it might not it should give me if I did the right side wouldn't it a bit of a bearing line so I've just taken the thickness halved it Okay, right, so we've still got a bit of scale on here, so we'll clean this all off. Um, so I've got a flap disc on there, so we're going to clean off the scale. We've cut our edges. Now, these are, these are very roughly done, so we'll finish them off afterwards. If I do it too sharp, um, this, because that will leave a really thin edge, that will overheat that edge. Um, I'm really not sure if I'm going to put these in the kiln or not. Um, I think, because they're thin, I'm going to be better to gram with some mole grips, heat them up, and then go straight in the quench um, with a blowtorch rather than um, stick them in the kiln because I can't keep an eye on them. I've got to get them just right before I quench it. Now I want to quench this edge. So I'll get this edge nice and hot and quench it. But this edge, this doesn't matter if it's softer. If I make it too hard here, it's a fracture point. Yeah, so we could end up with a little crack there. So if I heat it here, get this edge nice and hot, and then, and then we'll go for a quench. Um, same with the other ones, they're very, very similar design. But if, if we still got a bit of flexibility in this, where it's a bit softer and a harder cutting edge, it might give us a, a bit of a chance of uh, retaining the knife and it not snapping. Awesome.
Okay, so that's them quenched. So you can see, obviously, we're holding the pliers on them. So this end doesn't need to be hardened. The handle's going on there. Really doesn't matter. It looks like, you know, these have, these have had a decent bit of heat on them. You can see the way the oil has carbonised on it. So these should be pretty good. Now, we're testing. Looking pretty good. Just taking off the um, the black coating, but the knife underneath is hard. It will kill. <laughs> Just over 200 degrees, 230 degrees, something like that. Um, an hour, let them cool down to room temperature, and then give them another hour. So you've got three cycles of one hour, letting them cool down at each each time, and they should change colour to sort of a straw colour if we're lucky. So I'll bring you back when it's done because it's pretty boring. Okay, so this is these tempered. So this has had three hours in the oven. Um, at to about 200 to 220 um, and you've got that straw color which is which is what we're after now they have warped a tiny bit now this one here has got some of my lasagna on it because while I had the oven on there's no point wasting uh, power so I, <laughs> it fell in my lasagna but there we go um, but still they have warped a tiny tiny bit you notice there's a little bit of movement here so i'm going to try and get those little there's a bit of a twist in this one and um, we're going to get those little imperfections out and hopefully um then we can continue so i'll find something nice and flat to lay them on so a bit of laminate floor in there so that's decent and flat Right, so if that, so the blade's pretty good, it's just this tail is lifting up a bit. The concern is now it's tempered, is that it's going to snap. Preston, what are you doing? Are you being helpful, Preston? So it's about 120 mil, 110, what's this, 105 and again 125, so if I cut six bits of wood at 125 that will give us plenty. So this is the wood I'm going to use, um, which I think is oak, but I'm not 100% sure, it's just a bit of wood to be honest. Um, and I had some brass pins 
that I cannot find them for the life of me. Um, so I'm going to use, I've got some very fine steel, or some steel bar here, so I can put it in, I can hammer it over a bit, uh, probably with a centre punch. Um, so we only need a couple of pins per knife and the rest of the holes, the rest of the holes in the knife are going to be for glue to seat through. And that, this is like a perfect fit, so. Oh, should be good. Now, am I going to stabilise the wood? Am I bollocks? Um, so I'm going to oil it, um, put it in the oven, let it warm up, let the grain rise, then I'm going to sand it down again. But I'm not going to bother stabilising. Um, it's without using you know, a proper pressure vessel to get all of the all of the air out of the wood, and it's just an ex uh, uh, it's just time and expense. You know how much use of these knives going to get realistically? You know it's not a three hundred pound knife. Um, you know it's just a occasional use knife shaped object. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, as I've cut these, I've left space. Yeah, so this is all going to get filed off so I can file straight down to the metal rather than going over the line. Um, so now we need to get it where it sits just right. We're going to drill these pins, then I'm going to prep the rest of this blade. So I'm going to scour this. I'm going to put loads of. I'll take my ear defenders off because then I, can, I won't have to be shouting. Um, I need to scour this so we get a good key. Um, I make sure there's no grease on it from, from come, being in the oven and whatnot. Then we're going to give this a nice polish up, get this all this yellow off. Um, and then the sharpening can be left till the end. But what I'll, what I'll probably do is bond these and glue these today and then come back later. And then do the final sharpen and stuff. Okay. Gunji magic. Right, so I'm going to need this radius in here so I can get into the tight turn there. So what I'm going to have to do 
Okay, let's cut along here and off there and we'll take this guard off. Now, never modify any tools because you'll void your warranty and make them more dangerous. Okay, now with machines like this, they do not turn themselves off just because you spray blood at them. Okay, so as a starting point, I've marked this on both sides. Um, so I'm thinking this needs like a teardrop handle because of the, so it would give you a little bit more control up the top there and a bit more grip on the back of your fingers. Um, that's where I'm going anyway. Uh, so I'm going to plane all of this off. Well, not plane it off. I'm going to use a, a flap disc on the grinder, which is going to make a lot of dust. So. Um, I'm going to put my face mask and my goggles on and uh, sit it in the vice, get it down as far as I can um, and then I'll finish off by hand um, and then start smoothing.
crash here they are so this is more the cutting type knife so different shaped handle gone for kind of the coke bottle rounded didn't want to go too thin but to be honest that that feels good it doesn't doesn't look too great because you've crossed it's crossed the grain a lot so it doesn't look as smooth but it's just the grain of the wood so I think that's the best we're going to get with that um, but yeah got a decent edge on it quite happy with that and then we've got the thicker of the two and uh, all the markings in the blade there's a lot of deep deep scratches in this blade it's where it was originally on the circular saw so I actually think that gives it a bit of a sort of patina and a bit of an edge um, yeah it makes it look kind of used and rustic there you go that's the word that's the word so you know the edge is fairly balanced plunge lines are not bad um, considering it's done by eye I uh, could do with another bit of a sharpen there, I've just noticed a little blunt spot between there and there. But not bad. And then the last one, this is um, with mahogany handles which weren't quite as thick. But this one, a lot less chance of rotating in your hand because it's that bit thinner. Um, but because I was unsure of this wood, I weren't sure how, th how thin I could go with it. Whereas mahogany, I know, is going to be quite strong. Um, so it's the same design. Um, this one is just a fraction bigger. Um, if you saw the printout. So it's just that you know, another 20 mil longer. So this is quite a nice little camp knife, day knife, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, all round, fairly pleased. My log is a bit rotten. I think I need to replace this. Um... But yeah, um, I'll see if I can find a bit of wood and we can practice a bit of whittling just to see uh, what they cut like. So, got a bit of hazel here. Not too terrible. And this hazel is very dry and very hard, so. bad that's a lot better lot, lot better grip on this one Not bad. Decent. Also, 
not bad. As you still look good. So, uh, I'd say it's a success. Um, but only, you know, time will tell. God damn you, focus. I despise this camera. There we go. Um, see, this is why I hate this camera, because it ruins your train of thought, because you're worrying about it being in focus the whole time, which is why I've got also got the GoPro, which I'm probably going to start using, because this thing is really starting to